Hey guys, it's now possible to create any face that you like. And then with that one face as input, create consistent images of that same face or person, basically creating a virtual model or an AI influencer. With a tool called Focus, everything including the installation process becomes super easy and I would show you everything you need to know right now. First, we would install Focus and learn the basics of its UI. Then we create a base image, which we then use to create more images of that same person. We would also look at how to quickly fix some of the imperfections in the images before we would dive into some of the settings in a bit more detail. The official documentation says you need at least 8 gigabytes of system RAM and an NVIDIA GPU with 4 gigabytes of video RAM, but you also need about 33 gigabytes of disk space and you need to have Pinocchio installed, but if you need help doing so, then you can watch this video. Once you have Pinocchio open, the hardest part when installing Focus is having to locate it in the Discover tab. But once you do, then you only have to click download two times and then install. After downloading some large model files, your web browser should open and this is a good time to get familiar with the tool. So I will quickly walk you through the UI. Some of it might be obvious if you're using Stable Effusion a lot. The main interface is pretty simple, but down here you can enable the advanced options, which shows you some performance presets that we would check out in detail later. Here you can change the resolution and the amount of images you want to generate, and this is where you can enter the negative prompt. And if you untake this, you will be able to manipulate the seed in the Style tab. You are presented with many, many different styles that you can easily apply to your image. Again, more on that later. In the model tab, you will see that Juggernaut XL is selected by default as it has been automatically downloaded during the installation. You can obviously change to another checkpoint or select Refiner, but keep in mind that Focus only supports SDXL checkpoints. Using one or multiple LoRa's, including setting their weights, is also supported. The Advanced tab has the setting for the Guidance Scale, which basically defines how strong your prompt should be, and the Image Sharpness, which as the name and description say, influences the soft and hardness of the edges and textures of the image. So let's get started by creating the portrait that will act as our base for the rest of the images. For the prompt, I went to Civit AI to the page of the checkpoint that we are using. So I copy and paste the prompt of this image, modify it a bit, and see what it gives me. By the way, whenever you use the new feature in the tool for the first time, the required files will be downloaded automatically in the background. You can get some pretty good results and variations. And when you found a face that you like, you need to head down to Input Image and switch to the Image Prompt tab, where we click on Advanced, and then drag and drop our input image into this field. Then we can change the preset to Face Swap. And the last thing we need to do now is the prompt. You can start with a clean prompt, but I like modifying the one that was used for the input image, since I feel that it's doing a better job at making the face look closer to the input face. As you can see, these images are very similar compared to the input image, so just keep adding more to the prompt, and you will get the image that you want. By the way, all images are saved automatically, and you can find them under Outputs in your Focus folder. Now let's assume you have a picture that you like, but it's not quite perfect, and you want to change some things. Then you can go into the In Paint Out Paint tab, drag in the image you want to edit, and then you highlight the area you want to in paint. This is great if you need to fix the eyes, or change the clothes. If you want to make additional changes, don't forget to drag the new image into the in paint field before doing more in painting. This way, you won't lose your edits. By the way, here you can change the in painting method, but I'm getting really good results with a default option no matter what I'm in painting. In the same tab, you can expand your image easily, and the only thing you need to do is set the direction you want to out paint. We want a wider image, so we check left and right, and even with a simple prompt, we are getting a decent output image. If you have an image that you're happy with, you can upscale it by going to the Upscale tab and dragging your image over there. These two options can be used to create variants of the image, which is fun to play around with, but for our use case, where we want the face to be consistent, it is not really helpful. That's why we select Upscale at 2x and hit Generate, which will give us a nicely upscaled image. 
Another cool feature of the image prompt is that just like with ControlNet, you can use multiple images as input and basically combine certain features of them. In this example, we want the face of our model again. So we need to set this setting to face swap. And since we want this bodybuilding pose, we use Pyrocanny, which works great for poses. And for the background, we use this image with a CPDS preset as it's supposed to work great with any structure. And the result is a nice blend of all our images. Now let's look at some of the settings in more detail and we will start with the setting for the image prompt, specifically the stop at value. As you can tell at 0.5, it starts to look like our input image. So since going lower from the default value makes the face look less like the one we want. And since going higher than 0.9 doesn't seem to make difference. I don't see any reason changing this from the default value. The weight is similar in terms that starting at 0.5, the woman starts looking like the input image. But here, the higher you go, the closer it resembles the input. So it can help increasing the weight value if you're having issues with that. However, at some point it's losing our prompt which is being in a gym. Then there is the performance preset and from my experience there's hardly any difference between speed and quality. But extreme speed looks a lot less like the input image. I recommend using quality though as it has less of the imperfections that the speed preset has and doesn't take too much longer to generate. Next up are the style presets, and since there are so many of them, I only tried adding these three to the ones that are enabled by default. As expected, the differences are subtle, but it just shows that the style presets can have a small impact on how the image looks. The guidance scale is a setting that you shouldn't change too much from the default value, but you can go a bit higher if you want to. The minimum value at 1 just doesn't look like the input image at all, and the max value, I don't even know what to say about that. The sharpness setting doesn't seem to make much of a difference at first glance unless you go for the highest value, but if you pay attention to the skin, you can tell that with a higher sharpness value, the skin gets more rough or realistic, so if that's what you're after, then you should use a higher value than the default one. And lastly, another thing that can have quite the impact on your images is the aspect ratio or resolution. Thankfully, Focus shows us all resolutions that work fine with SDXL. And while testing, I couldn't find a single resolution from that list or ratio, which didn't give great results. As you might be able to hear, I'm using an AI voice. And if you want to find out how that's done, then check out this video. And this video is for you if you wonder what hardware I am using or what I'd recommend if you wanted to upgrade your PC to run AI tools locally. Thanks to anyone that is contributing to the tools used in this video or to the open source AI scene in general. And especially thanks to you for watching the video until the end. If you learned anything new, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed or liked or shared the video. And I'll see you next time.